fuck me. <laughs> <sighs> it's so funny the truth for me today <laughs> was that I don't know what my truth is <laughs> that sounds so flaky and like so non-committal and unclear <sighs> the truth is I just wanted these to be I want these to be an expression. I want these to be a pure creative expression. And there's so many pieces that come up around that, around like, you're not cool enough. You have to have something like edgy to have a creative expression just for the sake of creative expression. like. For it to be considered art, you have to have like this depth and this like intention or just some like coolness, this coolness that I, in my head, I don't possess at all. Um, although people outside me seem to. Um, so there's this edginess that I'm apparently lacking. <sighs> but there's just this desire. There's just this desire for expression. And... My feminine is like, just wants to play in this realm of oh, just expressing for the sake of expressing. And my intention is just to open up the space for me to express, to create some form of container where I can be all of myself and express all of myself. That's going to look really ugly some days. It's going to look really messy. <laughs> some days it's going to be really profound and beautiful. Some days it's just going to be weird. <gasps> <sighs> to be honest, there's like a lot of anger here. And a part of me doesn't feel ready to fully express that on live yet because it's noisy and it's messy and it's vulnerable as fuck. Um, I really want to, and I feel like I'm leaning into that next and I really want to, um, but not yet. And that's okay. I've been owning the power of my no lately. It's so funny. I feel like I rushed into so much in my life. I rushed into my first, all of my first like experiences with guys, all of my first intimate experiences felt rushed. It felt like if I don't let this guy finger me, then in the movies, then he won't like me anymore and he's gonna tell all his friends that I didn't go there with him. It felt like, holy shit, this feels really good. I just wanna keep going and keep pushing this because this feels naughty and I feel alive and this feels a bit dangerous. And it felt like I'm so fucking angry at my parents right now that I want to do the complete opposite and I want to rebel as far away from the limitations that they've set for me as I possibly can. <sighs> so I'm just going to lean in and do this thing. <laughs> I'm going to be like so far gone. I'm going to push the boundaries so far. Because um, that's the only way I know to express my anger at the limitations that I feel and the restrictions that I feel. Hmm. Uh, the 
there's this part of me that doesn't want this to turn into like slam poetry <laughs> and I love slam poetry and I love like just poetry in general but there's a part of me that wants this to like transcend beyond any kind of medium or like modality or method um this is just pure expression and in these videos I can like I want to dance <laughs> I really want to fucking dance um I want to sing for you guys at some point I just want to be all of myself um it's gonna be it's gonna be fucking weird <laughs> And my commitment to myself or my commitment to like this creative expression is to show up for an hour every day <laughs> and just see what wants to come through. And it's so funny. I've like, <sighs> I have zero expectations and zero fucking idea to be completely honest of what's going to come out of this like i have no idea genuinely no fucking idea um and i know that it's actually probably more for me than it is for anyone out there just putting that out there um it's more for me to get comfortable expressing all of who i am in the world <sighs> and for me to feel really safe to share the fullest expression of who i am and all of the different parts of me um because there's lots and there's like a depth to this experience that I've never really fully like, I'm still learning how to like lean into and expand into and feel into um, and like feel safe in doing that. Cause there's a part of me that's like defaults to overexpression. Like I'm just gonna overexpress, um, which looks like speaking from up here and it looks like Oh, frantic. <laughs> um, but there's this part of me that knows that, like, it's my energy that's the transmission. Um, and it's just being in all of that on live. Which is new and weird and crazy. And kind of fun-ish. Hmm. It's also just like a spiritual practice for me. Like this whole idea of not overexpressing. This whole idea of like calling all of my power and my energy back from all of the places that I've like spoofed all over the internet. <laughs> Seriously, that's what it feels like. It feels like I'm eating ideas for breakfast. <laughs> it feels like I'm just like a massive idea slut. So like ideas play with me all day long and I play with them all day long. And I invite them in and I like fuck with them for a little while and then I like shoot them, spit them back out. I don't make love to ideas yet. No, that's not true. I do. I've just started learning how to make love to ideas. And... And that feels like letting them come and plant themselves inside me and being actively an active participant, an active co-creator in the creation process. So not allowing myself to be literally like fucked open or raped by inspiration, but like fully allowing myself to be a part of the co-creation. And I feel like, see, when I say stuff like that, I'm like, is that like an overexpression? Like, is that too much, too fast, like too far? And I think there'll probably be a little bit of that in these videos because this part of like, part of me has been like, oh, huh. I've been like, huh, for so long, like huh, keeping it in. Huh. I'm just do that again. Huh. <laughs> I've been keeping it in for so long that it's probably going to like, oh, it's like bursting at the seams trying to get out. So it's going to come across a bit like hard and unrefined. Um, 
there's like a rawness in it but it's this idea of like showing up and this being like a pleasurable experience right because it's like fuck creativity i mean yeah it's hard and yeah it's like challenging and yes it forces you to like deal with all your shit in so many ways but if you don't enjoy it, like, it's not enjoyable, it's not pleasurable, why would we keep doing it? And I think that's what drives people to drink and drugs and, like, smoking and, like, addiction. Um, is creatives who have all this, like, stuff inside of them or have all these ideas coming, like, to them, all this creative energy surrounding them. Um, but they don't really know what to do with it. Or well, they don't know how to like express it or channel it in healthy ways. That's what it was for me. That's definitely like my journey. Um, so yeah, this is like a healthy way for me to express creatively. Um, it's like a feminine flow thing too. Like there's this element of like I want this to be like my masculine is my other side of my business. And this is like my feminine just like fucking letting rip. And one of my favorite the best analogy I know is like the masculine is like <sighs> strong, sturdy, stable. This is not men. This is masculine energy. Strong, sturdy, stable. Excuse me. And the feminine is like the shit that floats around that. She dances in all her creative energy and expression around the masculine. And the masculine holds her. And the feminine just fucking lets rip. <laughs> and the masculine's like firmly rooted, like stable. And the feminine's like surrender. <laughs> and I'm learning how to be both. And I'm learning how to cultivate both. This is so weird. Like this process of like creating, knowing that this is for me, but also knowing that people are going to see this. Like it's this weird tension between like what feels good for me and what I feel like I need to like add value. It's so fucking weird. Like to you. And it's like this yeah i'm trying to like cultivate i guess like the absence of self-consciousness by drawing and bringing light to the self-consciousness um yeah but acknowledging always that it's still gonna be there <sighs> mm. What feels true for me to acknowledge and share in this moment right now is that I'm still learning how to be okay with silence. <laughs> Seriously, like in my relationships and like in my expression. Because um, there's so much, right? That's like the depth of what we want to communicate. Just like it comes through our presence and through our energy. And it's just not a words thing that's like processed up here. It's an energetic thing that's like delivered from here to here. Um, and I want you to feel that in this video. Like if you're not feeling it, then I, I don't really know what to say. But <laughs> if you are, <laughs> beautiful, amazing. Um, but I feel like so much of this is going to be an energetic transmission rather than like a I'm speaking to you from my knowledge. It's like embodied presence. Yeah, I'm still getting used to the silence. And it's so funny, I'm still getting used to like, <laughs> knowing that when I feel called to share something, it's the thing I most need to hear and the thing I most need to learn. Um, I went through this whole phase of like literally wanting to just share everything on the internet. I'd like learn something or something would drop in and it'd be like, fuck yes, like I feel that. And I'm like, quickly share it, quickly post it on Instagram, quickly put up a fucking story. And <laughs> I listened to this podcast that actually just motherfucking changed my life. Like, no joke. Motherfucking changed my life. <laughs> it's seriously like it changed my fucking life. Um... But I listened to this podcast and it was about how, yeah, most of us are just really overexpressed. And we use, like, the guise of, like, under the guise of, like, showing up on social media. We just, like, project what we need to 
internalize really and embody we project what we need to embody um which has so many meanings now that i just said it out loud so many double meanings to that we project what we need to embody mm -hmm. <laughs> oh fuck So for me, it's like all the things that I feel like I need to share with you are actually just the things that I need to embody here. Yeah, I feel like I'm doing that. Like I feel like I'm doing that really well. It's just weird to be in this place of uncertainty, hey? It's like so weird. And I'm learning not to judge the weirdness of this expression. <laughs> Seriously. I did this video the other day in a um, group that I'm a part of. And that's the thing about overexpression. It feels like shit. Like it actually feels like shit. For me, it felt like absolute shit for me. Um, it literally feels like you're just being used by the divine or by the creative forces that be in the world. And I just, yeah, I didn't feel like I was an active participant. I just felt like I was like, all right, use me. And I was like the starfish that was just lying there and getting like, over and over and over again, you know what I mean? Oh. And I think it's like... I did this in a Facebook group the other day and the video got um, taken down because I had a nip slip. <laughs> Seriously. Excuse me. <laughs> that was gross. But also not gross. Anyone else get really like shamed for their bodily functions when they were little? Like burping and stuff? Like it was just like, ew. Like, why is it ew? I mean, it's natural. Like it's part of what we do every day. Like. It's a human function. <laughs> like how many other ways to like human beings, as human beings, we like shame ourselves for doing things that are like so natural to us, seriously. Like we actually like can't help them. Like we would get sick if we didn't do them. And we're like, that's disgusting. <laughs> and our bodies are like, um, this is what I need to do to function. And humans are like, mm, can you not? Like that's a bit gross. <laughs> or like, ew, or like don't bend over. Or like, ew, I just accidentally saw your vag. Like, I've never said that word in my life. Um, but seriously, seriously, like, mm, yeah, how often do we, like, shame ourselves as humans for, like, doing the things that are literally come so naturally out of us? Like, why, how did, why does that make, the just, why, what? <laughs> like, what? Um, that's another thing with these videos, they're just not going to be edited at all. Um, I don't like editing not because I like have anything against it I just don't genuinely don't like it doing it like the process of doing it like the thought of like taking this video and like chopping it up into little pieces and then like putting pieces together and then like zooming in on my face and then like adding music or like sound effects or like jump cuts or whatever like that just I'm, it, I'm sure it would look really cool um but that just like that makes me want to curl up and die <laughs> seriously <sighs> And isn't it so fucking weird that as millennials we feel safer like being fully expressing to a camera that could potentially go like to hundreds of people, millions, thousands and millions of people all over the world versus like sitting across from someone that we know and love and like being all of this. Isn't that so weird? Um, I kind of think it's healthy. Like 
I kind of think it's healthy that we have a space to be all of who we are. Um, and then if that, like, creating that container where we feel safe enough to be all of who we are helps us to, like, that to, like, that filters out into our lives. Like, that's a good thing. I feel like that would be a really healthy thing for me. And, like, bringing all of myself to my relationships. Um, and just feeling okay with all of who I am. And I'm talking about this like I've, like, have so far to go on this journey. And I'm, like, zero self-acceptance. I've come a long way on this journey. <sighs> so far. Who else does eye gazing? Like eye gazing with yourself in the mirror. It's fucking wild. Seriously, it's so weird. Um, yeah. So funny, like. In this journey of expression, it feels like learning for me where the pieces are that I want to express and where the pieces are that I don't and not because I'm scared to but because I just don't want to express or share that part of myself and I think that's the difference between like vulnerability and disclosure or like I'm still learning how to tell the difference between like what's being vulnerable and what's just like disclosing information for the sake of being emotionally man manipulative um, and learning that point in me where I'm like where I reach that point where it's like okay yeah I actually feel really cool to share this versus like that's like a sacred part of me that I just want to keep to myself knowing that like that part of me gets to like be felt and I don't actually have to say it it's like discernment I guess um yeah it's so funny I think the reason that this is like so vulnerable for me or just like have not done this in the past um so many reasons <laughs> But mostly because, like, I like to come across as having it all together. Or, like, I like to display my wisdom. That was not... That sounded like a euphemism. That's not a euphemism. Um, I like to come across as, like, in my certainty. I feel comfortable and confident in my certainty where is like a new place for me to play in is like my uncertainty and like the things that I just have no fucking clue about and acknowledging that I can be both like I can be like a wise loving or very old soul has lots of knowledge intellectual intellect over here um but also like hello child of the universe no fucking clue like the rest of us what we're doing here um but like also, hey, willing to take a really cool guess and also knowing that, hey, both of these, okay, <laughs> whatever I believe is going to determine my experience. <laughs> so, yeah, I get to do both. And then a part of me is like, maybe this is all just a massive waste of time. And yeah, maybe it is. <laughs> Maybe it is. Yeah. But 
I do know that the world needs more slowness. Um, I think we're all a bit addicted to adrenaline. Um, I was, yeah. You feel that, right? Like, you feel that. Um, and I do know that I get to bring, like, presence and slowness back. Just because it feels good. Like, it feels so much better. Hey, I, um, I've gone through this process lately of, like, resensitizing myself to the world. <laughs> Here's some value. <laughs> um, I literally went through this season where it's so funny because my life now looks exactly the same as it did before, but it's completely, it feels completely different. And... It was like I was going through the motions before and I was living like my ideal, living my ideal day, um, which I still do every day, like externally what it looked like, but I couldn't really feel into it. Do you know what I mean? Like I wasn't, like I was there, I was definitely conscious, I was present, I was awake, I was alive, I was paying attention, but I couldn't feel it. Like the things that I thought should feel good just didn't feel good. Like I would go down to the beach and I'd like walk in, down and touch the sand and like it'd be like the most beautiful day and there'd be like a whale jumping off in the distance and like the ocean crashing or it'd be a sunset. And it kind of made me panicky a little bit. Like I couldn't, I was like, okay, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be present. I'm going to absorb it all. Like, come on, soak, like fill me up. I want to just soak it all up. And I just couldn't. Um, it was really weird. I found myself in all these situations and places where it like, I felt like I should really just feel fucking amazing and relaxed and peaceful and blissed out and like, fuck yeah, this is life is epic. But I was kind of just still like, had that like, ooh, like I was a bit anxious and like, ugh, just like that underlying permeating anxious static um, that was just kind of filtering through every area of my life. And I'd literally like be doing all the things, like I'd be sitting, drinking cocktails overlooking the water, being like, oh, lovely. Oh, I'm so anxious. <laughs> Or like I'd be like walking down, touching the sand, walking to the beach in the morning. Like, ugh, so anxious. Um, and it was just like, I kind of was like, I don't feel good. Like these things, you know, everyone talks about how you look at the world and you fill up on its beauty and nature. It's like nourishes you and enriches. I just didn't feel enriched or nourished, even by all of the things that I was doing. Um, and for me, it was a realization that I'd actually desensitize myself to a lot of like feeling um, cause I didn't want to feel the bad stuff. It's like, it seems so obvious now that I'm saying it, but it was really fucking big for me. <laughs> it really was like, a, it was a grounding energy for me. I had to like ground into the earth, um, and just release a lot of stuff. Yeah. And it was kind of this feeling of like, and I've spoken about this before, but like I'm almost like so sensitive that like everything hurts. Um, and because everything hurts, I was like, fuck this. <laughs> I've got to find a way to like numb out and like armor up. And like desensitize so it doesn't hurt as much because there's no fucking way I'm making it through this life alive <laughs> if I have to feel this much all the time like it's gonna fucking kill me um, but I also blocked my receptivity to the good things and to pleasure so like things would like I'd like run my fingers up here and it'd just like trigger my trauma response rather than like feeling really good um, but yeah now is like <sighs> being really oh careful not to have another nip slip. Oh, but now it's like <sighs> I'm allowing and welcoming, allowing more pleasure, and that's what it, it feels like allowing because it feels like life is always pleasurable and life is always like there's always pleasure available like in the energy all around us. Like we can draw energy into our body and we can be like, 
life just wants to fuck us basically in the best way like life just wants to like make love to us sexual energy is like it's just a thing it's who i am you'll get used to it <laughs> um but it's like life always wants to make love to us right and because we're so scared of that being painful and we're scared of the negative experiences and we're scared of the darkness and we're scared and we're afraid of like all of the uncertainty and the fear and the pain and all of those things then we're kind of like we 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 block it and we say no life stop like stop stop giving us all the things i just want to like put my walls up i'm just gonna like desensitize i'm just gonna like tap out check out and i feel like life is like why like i just want to give you all the things um and i just want to like play with you make love to you and express myself through you but you're not letting me do it because you're so scared of like that being painful um and i think the trick is like not being scared of the pain and what i'm like finding now is i'm like embracing all of these parts of myself and embracing all of like the oh like the messiness and the vulnerability and the fear and the disgust and the anger and the anguish and the pain and the hurt and the sadness and the anger and whatever i'm embracing it all and i'm like okay i can feel this like i can feel that like when I'm get like when I'm triggered emotionally during the day, it was just it happened. It used to happen a lot for me. Like really, I just get triggered by everything because I was like, all these like little wounds would just be like, oh, 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 and everything would just fucking hurt. I felt like I was getting stabbed all day. Um, but now it's kind of like okay, like I'm gonna create safe containers where I can feel all my feelings, and it makes me less like reactive to things during the day, and I know that I can feel the bad stuff and I can hold myself through it and I can have like a meltdown on the floor where I'm like literally this is my screaming pillow oh. where I'm like see, I scream into this pillow all the time where I'm like screaming into a pillow and I can hold myself through that so it's okay like it's totally okay <laughs> um, and that means that I can fully be present with everything and be present with life um, and it's making way for some of the juicy pleasure to come back as well. Mind you, there's a lot of like, I don't know why this video is so self-deprecating. Like you would think I was really struggling. And in some ways I am. And in some ways we all are. And in some ways I'm doing really well. And in some ways there's no fucking judgment about what's struggling and what's doing well. Oh, <laughs> But it's like, there's a lot of emotional release that needs gets to happen it had to happen for me um like a, like all the times it was like all the times that i like didn't feel my anger now it gets to be felt all the sadness that i didn't feel and i get a bit resentful about that sometimes and sometimes my mind comes in and tries to trick me into being like that's because you slept around so much that's because you have so much shit in your history that's because you have like tries to shame me into being like this is because you fucked up so much in your past that you have to go through all this now and I'm still trying to work out that I know that's not true I'm still just trying to work out like it feels like I have a lot of stuff like it feels like I have a lot of stuff to process um and there's a lot of emotion there like I literally feel like I could just scream into a pillow for like the, every, all day every day for the next 10 years and I'd still be like still going um like I'd feel a lot lighter and I'd feel great but I'd still be going like there's still more and maybe that's just like what I'll do for the rest of my life who knows I'm just grateful I have like a tool to do it now to process and express it um but yeah it's making way for more of the juiciness and I feel like I'm not like spinning around out here anymore I'm more here and like here See my belly. And a part of this is like figuring out what actually feels good for me, hey. Because it's like you focus so much on like serving your audience and like what do they want to hear? What do they need? What am I going to tell them? What am I going to give them? 
that you kind of forget that like hang on a minute this was like the whole point of this was so I could the whole process is about like feeling good for me um and there's something in it for me rather than just like but and I feel like people feel that when you're enjoying yourself and I can fucking see it now and I can just feel when I'm not enjoying myself or I'm not like tuned in tapped in turned on engaged like actively engaged so it's learning like what feels good I'd invite you if you feel called to experience a healing now and receive a healing. Just open up your hands like this, like this, like this, whatever you want to do. I love you guys this has been so weird and amazing and wonderful and just yeah love you